So for today's session, we will start with a core presentation, uh, followed by my feedback, and then if Hafiz come and I will Hafiz will present, and then I will give a uh, what we call uh, feedback on Hafiz presentation after that. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to everyone. I am Kuratu Ain Aznir. So today I'm going to present a game between me and Hafiz. Uh, Hafiz as white and I am as black. So uh, just before I start, just let me know if my internet connection is unstable or is uh, any disturb. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's move on. Okay, for opening, Hafiz play e4 and I um, defense with Sicilian defense. Okay, right now uh, Hafiz um, play f4. Okay, f4 with uh, he move his f1, which I think, um, I don't know what kind of opening is there, I don't remember, but uh, coach said before that uh, be careful if we want to move the f point. so let's proceed I move my knight here and Hafiz also play his knight to f3 okay at this point um, I played uh, knight f6 and actually I I confused whether I want to move this uh, point or this knight but um, because I'm afraid that this one will uh, move forward, but it's okay. Uh, and then, so I thought that Hafiz will move this one, but instead of that, he moved his shop to threatening my knight here. So to avoid a uh, double point, to avoid double point, I, I, Move my queen here to protect the to make up this knight. And half is take my knight, I will take back with my queen. So and then here uh half is castling, which is uh detect as a mistake. I think it is because um uh, this diagonal um not seem really safe. So that that's the uh, um but I didn't realize that so I move this bishop which is inaccuracy which um propose or uh by the stop fish um I should move this knight to take this one and if he take back with his knight I will take back with my queen so yeah but it's okay Okay, and then um, Hafiz move uh, D3. Okay. And then I castling. Hafiz move H3. And then, yeah. Why be, uh, I move this is because I want to move my bishop here and free up this rope. Like, I don't want this rope to be stuck at this point okay okay and then half is move uh, g4 so as i can see that this is an op uh, open space so like coach said before if we open space so that we have we also have the responsibility to protect this area but I think maybe uh, Hafiz want to attack my king side right here. So it's okay. Uh, I made a mistake, which I moved this point to h6. Uh, before um, before I attend this Masu coaching, I uh, my habit is like to move this uh, like this point and this point forward. So it's kind of at that time I feel like okay just move this <laughs> okay but I realized that uh, it's unnecessary actually so Hafiz uh, move his queen to e1 I move my bishop there 
And yeah, Hafiz attacking this area by moving this pawn. And I take with this pawn. So right now we can see that this uh, file is like open file. So it's easy for a queen to um, attack, attack me. Attack, attack. Okay. Right. Okay, then you take my one space knight. I move this uh, knight because I want to some sort of like block this area if uh, queen move if queen move here. And then yeah, uh, the queen move there. And then I back up my knight with this one. <laughs> Hafiz try to pressure this area by moving uh, to f5, which is yeah, taking s in the crisis. Then I take back. Okay. Okay, why I take this uh, knight? It is uh, at that time, I think that I don't want uh, this area become more pressure to me, so I just take because if I take his knight, uh, because I don't want to pressure too much at that area time, but I didn't realize that this bishop is actually not activated yet, so he can take my uh, bishop here, and then um, this area will become more complicated, uh, I guess. Okay. So, but eventually, uh, Hafiz didn't take that with Bishop, but he take that uh, with his Queen. Okay. Then I just, okay. At this time, um, I feel that I have a huge gap of time, um, Hafiz and I, so why not just sacrifice the Queen? <laughs> Uh, because I don't want to mess up more. So if you take, I take back with my knight. Okay. And then he tried to attack my rook there. I run away. And then I try to threaten his bishop. Okay. Uh, this is a blunder. Which I think if I didn't move this knight, it's actually not a problem. Because if he take my knight, then I can take back with my rook. But maybe uh like pressure at that time, so just I still love my knight. <laughs> so I just move there. But yeah, this can be like easy for white to attack me yeah so suggested move is that i need to move this root here so that you can double look. okay okay uh, and then take that so i thought that hafiz will take this slide but he take my points here Okay. <laughs> then I take his rook and then you move his rook. So, yeah. Okay. So, actually, this is an inaccuracy because when half is moved here, it actually can for, for this king and this pawn. So, I move my king and he take my pawns. So, right here, we can see that I'm losing actually, yeah, already. <laughs> because Hafiz uh, pawn have four and they are like united. Yeah. So, so, but my pawns right here is really separated and so lonely there, no backup if, uh, so at this moment, I think Hafiz still can have chance to like claim uh, queen or anything. In advance, and then okay, and then uh, 
he moved to check me. Then check this move. So why I move here is actually because I think I want to avoid this bishop from check me. So I moved there, but I didn't um realize or I miss. I miscalculate that this bishop is actually can fork me, my rook and my king. So yeah. But if he take my rook, then I also can take his rook. So yeah. Yes. The 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 patient we is my time, so such a huge gap there. And I'm trying to protect my pawns, but mm. <laughs> okay. Take this and yeah, my time is out. So, but I can conclude that my game with Hafiz here is like I'm not really attacking Hafiz. I'm just defense and I don't know, <laughs> just uh defense and. Some sort of like follow half is without attacking him, like threaten him. Yeah, so I can see that white have more advantage. Lah. So, yeah, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, so this is uh, my feedback on Hafiz and Kurato Ain game. So Hafiz start with e4. Hafiz is e4 player. So uh, Kur play Sicilian and Hafiz reply with nc3. nc3, NC3 is basically a close uh, Sicilian. So in normal Sicilian, you always see a uh, white play like this. The reason white play like this is that he want to exchange this pawn on d4, uh, giving black this what we call the open file on the c file. Um, Normally, uh, if let's say uh, white doesn't want to go to this open variation of Sicilian, he normally choose two things, either Alapin, so either he play this thing, the Alapin system, or he play the closed system, because the closed system, closed Sicilian is totally different than a normal open Sicilian. Eh? Uh, in closed Sicilian, this pawn normally, uh, what we call, go to D3. So the typical move for the uh, closed Sicilian is NC3, it's like this. Eh? This is a uh, close Sicilian. You can see uh, uh, what we call the white uh, try to uh, move uh, his piece or his uh, attack on the king side, and uh, and white uh, and black normally fake to his bishop lah. This is what we call uh, the main <coughs> the main theory of the close Sicilian. <coughs> the close Sicilian, okay. Um, yeah, uh, and also uh, in the game, in the game, uh, Kur play C E6. Okay, so normally when you play E6, this is a character of Paulson system, meaning that normally when in Sicilian, you most of the time you will see D6 rather than E6. Okay, uh, because this D6, this D pawn sort of like uh, protect this square. So if let's say you put your knight here, then you don't need to worry about this pawn move to move forward lah. So that's one of the idea of this uh, d6. Uh, what I call d6 uh, pawn in normal Sicilian, uh, but in uh, e6 Sicilian like this, e6 Sicilian like this normally called as a Paulson system. Uh, there are no so this pawn they, they normally can go forward easily. So it's very careful when you play this system. If you put your knight here, if you if black try to put a uh, knight here, always be careful about this pawn push. Huh? Because now this pawn push is uh, real lah. Uh, so that's one thing lah. Uh, the virtue of this uh, e6 can be seen by when you play the normal open, for example, like this. Okay, the virtue of this e6 move can be seen when when you when uh, what play the open what call open open variation where this bishop now can go uh, straight up out lah. Uh, compared to the normally this bishop we go somewhere here and so on so that's one of the virtue of this uh, e6 lah. the e6 uh, pawn move in uh, Paulson variation of Sicilian uh, and if we see in the game okay if we see in the game uh, in the game uh, 
this e pound this what we call because white doesn't play open sicilian so this pound still there this pound still there so this bishop also still doesn't have any what we call any uh, move uh, out lah cannot go to b4 and so on but still this e6 move still okay because not only this e6 move uh, one of the reason why people play this is because they want to move the bishop and another reason is because they want to black want to just move d5 in one go so this e6 sort of like support this d5 pawn uh, on the nilah on the e5 on the d5 square so that's one of the virtue of the e6 uh, position lah okay so now hafiz play this uh, f4 uh, in the presentation, could uh, say that he she doesn't know what is this uh call the name of this opening. This basically uh, uh the system the, the the configuration more or less like a Grand Prix attack. Eh? G R A N P R I X Grand Prix. Okay, Grand Prix attacks in Sicilian. We call it uh yeah Grand Prix Sicilian lah. Grand Prix Sicilian. Normally in Grand Prix attack you have something like this. Eh? This is a theory in Grand Prix attack. You have this something something like this. Okay, in Grand Prix attack, normally the bishop goes out first. Okay, in close Sicilian, you will see that this pawn goes to d3 first before the bishop coming out. But in Grand Prix attack, the bishop coming first. Okay, uh, and also with this configuration lah, this f4 and e4 configuration. Uh, white goal in this Grand Prix attack is to castling, to cast, to castling what we call to castling king side, to castling king side, and then uh, attack straight away here lah. With the bishop on this c4 eyeing on this diagonal, it's much more effective lah. So that's the idea in Grand Prix. Normally the Grand Prix goes like this, goes like this, and then uh, black try to like what we call blunt the the bishop, and then white try to sort of like open the position. At least you get this f file. If let's say when white casting, you get this f file and so on, and black uh, normally goes to e7 and do all the stuff lah. Uh, castle and so on so this is a typical grand prix attack uh, but in the game uh, the bishop not going uh, on c4 yet so we see how the game goes so this thing and this thing and uh, and f6 in this case uh, during the presentation uh, Kur said that he, she she thought that she think a lot of time uh, she give a lot of thought whether you want she want to move this uh, knight or not because uh, she said that if she move this maybe white can push like that okay so uh, pushing here is not really dangerous lah because first uh, the purpose of, okay the, remember the purpose of white play f4 uh, this what we call this move is to push this thing to push the f pawn forward so if let's say uh, white play d white play what we call uh, <coughs> uh, like white play this e5 sort of like he he what we call he he uh, he what we call he neglect or he doesn't want to play this he, he the option to push this f4 is not there anymore lah because there are no support anymore there's no support anymore even though it seems that like uh, white is uh, having a lot of what call a lot of uh, space but this knight can easily go here go here and go here back so this pound this square is quite weak lah uh, for white of course white normally if white castle here uh, white also doesn't really want to push this thing because it's also weakened his own king side so it's like a double edge it seems like white have uh, sort of like conquer the center I mean that making the 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 question the position of the black quite cramp but at the same time this is what we call the over extension meaning that you have a uh, space but at the same time you have a lot of vacuum behind the space uh, it's not bad it's not like a totally a blunder it's not a blunder it's not a mistake at all it's just the way how uh, the player style lah. some player like to play like this some player doesn't like so uh, yeah it depend on your style this is also valid but it just uh, limit white uh, attacking possibilities lah because if let's say if uh, white goes back like this black goes back like this is he always black always have this thing remember this this is not open sicilian if open sicilian you don't have this d pound 
you this d pawn is not there so you have this queen have this file half of a file so that's have that is advantage because uh in that case <coughs> in this <coughs> in that case the knight can go here then the, this knight can go here and can go here okay in this position if the knight go here and go here uh black just take with the bishop and then if the pawn let me give a null move lah insert null move insert null move insert null move so i go here and then insert null move i go here and then insert and then take here and then take here so this position is not really dangerous for white uh, for black because why because for example this pawn white pawn is basically pro making this pawn safe uh, black pawn safe because uh this pawn is safe lah from the frontal attack and so on okay and this bishop can go this way lah so that's still you have life there uh, along this diagonal and also there are no like pawn here and then you can move the knight there and so on so this position is not difficult for white at all uh, black at all if you compare this with the open sicilian in open sicilian this pawn is not there so black and white have the option to take with the queen when the queen here ah that's a problem because the queen on the open file and also you can support the queen with the rook behind even and then you keep this pawn the, the what called the e7 d7 pawn of the black keep uh, need to be taken care lah so the bishop cannot go there because the pawn will be lost lah so that's the difference between the close uh, between this have normally pushing the pawn here pushing the pawn in front normally constitute an advantage lah you push the pawn in front normally an advantage when you are in open sicilian but in close sicilian it just like helping black lah because the position is close so now you close the everything then it's easy for black to manu maneuver here and then go here go here it's much easier lah because there are no open file and so on so uh don't uh, so here the e5 push is not really dangerous lah it's not really dangerous Okay, in the game, what happened? In the game, uh, Hafiz play bishop g bishop b5. Okay, bishop b5 trying to take this uh, knight on the what we call on the c6, and Kur play queen c7. Okay, again, uh, this queen c7 is quite dubious because why? The reason for queen c7 normally normally I go back a little bit. The reason for queen c7, if you see in the Sicilian, you see queen c7, for example, like this, like this, I go to this, uh, what we call the this Paulson variation first, eh, to give the idea of why queen c7 normally played. Normally he play like this, and then play like this, and then here normally what we play this this queen c7, some sort of like mystery move. The reason for this when you play this Paulson configuration, as I said before, this pawn. Uh, have this ability to push forward if you move the this knight first then you just push lah and this is advantage uh, because now the queen cannot take this pawn because you have this block normally you always need to consider this uh, before you move the pawn because you check you can take the pawn but here this uh, piece block the check so, so here need to go somewhere lah and because this file you see this file is half open so if let's say uh, let's say this go somewhere go to here back uh, so it's always uh, this this can go here and then can just get the grip on this uh, d6 lah uh, without this if this uh, somewhere somewhere else and then if bishop take you can take with the what you call the the queen and then reinforce the queen with the rook behind and so on so that's why in this uh, open sicilian you almost always see not almost always but more or less when people play Paulson like this before uh black play nf6 he will always play queen c7 lah queen c7 in order to protect this thing so that's the idea of queen c7 protect that and only prevent and also prevent uh, bishop c4 lah but bishop c4 also doesn't really have any value because it's hitting the granite anyway go to this core game the difference here the difference here if black white push white can always push this because here is they are different because this pawn cannot be what we call taken so it's not really 
ni lah. And Kur might want, might say that, oh, I put this thing is because I don't want my, my, what you call, my, my, my pound to be shattered. Okay. But in this case, even if you don't do that, if you do something else, continue your development, for example, bishop is seven like this. And even if black take, then you can take with this maybe or yeah you can take with this also still okay so it's not really yeah it's not really totally bad lah you can take with this also because you can push forward later on you can push forward later on yes of course you have this thing uh white have this thing but still it's not really dangerous lah you can just go here yeah it's not it's not totally dangerous because when you take remember when white take even though uh, white think that he have this what we call this pawn push remember now black you are giving black this two bishop okay you are giving black two bishop so yeah that's one thing also lah so not to be afraid of this thing lah uh, taking it but still queen c7 is not really not 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 a problem it's just a style lah uh, the, the 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 concern here is that black uh lack not lack in development meaning that it much easier for black to castle and do all this other stuff first that before you do all this thing but it's okay queen c7 is still okay it's not really bad uh, and then take and take okay of course you take with the queen lah if you take with the pawn then what the use of you moving the queen or the c7 right so you take with the queen and then this is the mistake in the presentation, Kur said this is a mistake because of this, what we call diagonal. It's not, yeah, this diagonal is bad, is also weak. But it's not like black can exploit that now. It's a mistake because black, white just give a free pound. This is free, right? This is free. This is free. So because when the queen there, when the queen is here, then the queen is attacking this pawn. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe uh, white half is play castle because this is like a routine in the what you call in the opening normally we have the routine right we have this setup in mind so sometime uh, we just move our piece so that like okay this we we know the setup we want to go to this setup straight away so sometimes you need to understand that every position need to be treated uh, concretely in this case they are like normally maybe Hafiz never see a queen here so when the position is quite different than what have we seen before then the automatic casting might be uh what you call uh, need to be uh nilah give a thought first lah before you do this castling automatically lah this is free because if you take with the knight <coughs> because you take with knight uh, wait, uh, you can take with the knight and even if like the knight goes to this what we call this uh e5 you have this intermezzo you have this uh, intermezzo capture attacking the queen also and then if the take and then this you can go here lah try to exchange if let's say the queen doesn't exchange go here in order to move the rook to this d1 uh, so the queen just go to a6 just to a6 okay you might not many people want to play like this uh, not many people want to sort of like shatter their pound structure on this here but uh, if you think about it if you take if you take Remember, not only white is a pound down. Remember, white is a pound down now. So this move, this like a uh, what we call double pound, is not really a pound. Is a pound. I mean, you already have extra pound, so don't really care lah much. And also, you have this two bishop. You have this two bishop. The two bishop in an open, fairly open position is very dangerous, as we see in the Far East and Khalid game. Uh, it's very dangerous for the attacker and also dangerous also not dangerous also difficult also to deal if your opponent have the double bishop uh, in defense lah. so uh yeah so so that's the thing lah. The, the reason why this is a mistake is because you give just this free pound that's all okay and then bishop is seven bishop is seven and of course uh, now uh white protect the pound lah. and then zero 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 uh, s3 uh, it's okay it's not really d6 g4 so now this is a typical of the grand prix attack you push all the pawn forward uh, 
this position is still equal eh? still equal even though a white pound uh, going forward okay white pound going forward at uh, looking threatening but uh, remember the king white king also still here still here so it's like a 50 50 chance i mean it's it's not like uh white got this all the attack can just push all the pawn forward like that uh, uh, without thinking if let's say white is castling queen side then it's okay this pawn push is really advantageous but if not if now in this case the white king is castle queen uh, king side where the pawn is pushed forward then the position we can say level lah. it's not it's not super dangerous but it's not also uh, uh, it's not also what we call calm lah. It, it's, it, it's not dangerous for either side lah. because the king also still here the white king uh, cover also being compromised okay and then black play s6 in this position uh, f6 is not really it's a dubious right it's not bad because even though you provide a hook there it's not like what can do much there so even though you you provide the the, the hook uh, in the game of course uh, Hafiz will push somewhere in front lah. but if we look at the game later on we can see that this push also not really dangerous okay because the reason because the king is still here so there are no like if the king is not here you can put the rook there both rook at g1 and f1 then it's really advantageous lah but in this case while the king is still there so it's like 50 50 lah we can say it's 50 50. Uh, this is not uh, really a bad mistake but it's much better for black to create his uh, her own counterplay like kur said the problem uh, after, at the end of the presentation kur said that uh, i only react with the half face play uh, yeah so i don't attack and so on so here is where you can attack you can create your own chance or counterplay by playing b5 because if you if for example now if let's say white push then just go to and e8 it's not like white can break the palm cover that's why this when you don't have the hook okay when you don't have the hook the palm cover is intact all all pound at the seventh rank it's very difficult to break you know it takes a lot of time for this to come and even even if the pound come into contact with this uh, pound on the seventh still it's difficult because the king white king also here so if the white king is somewhere here then it's a different story but the white king also on the king side so even if you push forward not only you try to break uh, the opponent cover your cover also become compromised so that is uh the the the, the what you call the 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 trade-off lah the, the you cannot get all the way uh you cannot uh, what we call get everything and uh, follow what you want because your king still there so this is the way how Kur can make a counter play you might say that oh i play this b5 but they play this what we call the pawn toward my king so it should be more dangerous here yeah in one sense but it takes a long time to go there and the king still there so you cannot really do anything much so here is much faster actually because you can yeah it's not much faster but at least you have some chance lah some chance to push forward this push forward and then create this open file on the a file and so on so this is the chance that uh what we call the code miss you need to create your own counterplay or else you will just reacting to your opponent play okay so yeah the aesthetic is not really a bad mistake but you can have better move b5 to create your own chance okay in the game uh hafiz play queen e1 this is a typical move when you play against grand prix attack so i call it grand prix style lah. grand prix style you normally play this thing this is typical normally the the idea for white is white want to go here and then push there and then bring the bishop is so uh white want to put all his piece on the king side so that's the idea for queen e1 because the queen here at d1 doesn't have any purpose lah so going here he can go here lah 
So that's the purpose of queen e1. Bishop d7, g5, take, take. Okay. Uh, even if you take with the uh, pawn also, uh, queen, uh, queen h4, g6, this still very pretty hard for white for white to come up with some attacks, okay? Because the position is already blocked there. But let's see the continuation. The white take with the what we call the knights, and then now, even though here, even though white position quite threatening because white is threatening this queen h4, this is not really what we call it's not really suit not really dangerous because of black can play this in the game black play this and h5 this is good move lah this uh, uh, good defensive move because if the knight just stay here then you can just always push whatever lah a lot of things can happen lah but remember if you push this queen also have some diagonal uh, but this is uh, one of the way how to defense against this thing the knight go to what we call knight go to h5 and this knight here is pretty safe. Huh? Uh, this uh, knight is pretty safe because of, uh, let's say, first, uh, white does not have light square bishop. Okay, this knight in the light square. So there are no light square bishop to attack this knight. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, second, there are no, uh, what you call? There are no G pawn. Okay, there are no, there are no G. Okay, I move this color first. There are also no G pawn that can uh, sort of like uh, harass this knight okay so there are no g pound uh, then what else what what make this knight is uh, better there uh, then you the h file also close so you see this h file also close also close so there are no sacrifice for example let's say white uh, black uh, pre, uh, protect this knight there are no sacrifice on the h file okay so that's what make this knight is okay on the h5 uh, and also even if the queen go here like in the game in the game the queen go h4 black just simply go g6 this is what happened in the game so here this knight is quite stable there it's pretty stable this this knight it takes a lot of time to go and ni lah so it's pretty stable there lah. It's pretty stable. Let's say that. Let's say now in the game, uh, white push to the f5 in order to sort of like break the pawn structure. Take, take. Okay. So here, this even though looks scary, but it's not much uh, problem lah. Because why? Uh, this g pound is the key here. This g pound in the defense against this type of attack. This g pound is the key because this g pound uh, protect this knight and this knight pro uh, prevent this uh, what we call this file to be open. Okay, and there are nobody can uh, what we call this large this this knight lah for time being. Okay, and remember when when <coughs> white take here in the game, remember white position also become quite what we call quite bare lah. So that's why this position is quite acceptable for those for both side lah. Uh, white doesn't have really big advantage here because nothing can be done. It's not really easy. Okay, so here in the game, uh, black make mistake taking with the what we call with the bishop. In the game, in the presentation, Kur said that uh, she take this because she doesn't want. A lot of peace pressuring his structure his uh, position here but if you look here even though they are peace the knight the queen but this knight cannot do anything for timing cannot do anything and this knight also is bl blocking this uh, bishop pass and so on uh, so it's not really uh, nila, not really dangerous for for black lah the key is this pawn this pawn is the key this pawn is the key. The G6 pawn is the key. If this pawn is gone, then it's problem lah. But it's very difficult to take this pawn. And this pawn is protecting this knight. So here in the game, uh, black takes on the black take the knights, which is uh, uh, not a good uh, move because why? Because a uh, white can take with the bishop and utilize all this weak square there. Then now you know the weak square, the concept of weak square. Because black doesn't have this black 
uh, light dark square bishop then white uh, have this uh, sort of advantage lah because now uh, in the game uh, what we call black uh, white play with the queen g5 but before we discuss this let's see first what is the best move for white apart from taking in the game uh, could take but what is the best move for black now the best move for black if you see here as we as we say before this pawn is very important pawn so black need to do somehow do something to protect this pawn at all costs so the best move is basically to push the d5 not only this move allow this what we call the queen to protect this pawn giving further reinforcement it's also protect this uh, square from being taken by the knight okay so you you sort of like prevent another piece another white piece to join the attack so that is a multi-purpose uh what we call multi-purpose move defense this defense and also uh nila, uh we call it prophylaxis preventing the the opponent move in advance uh, this thing okay so this is the best move lah and yeah that, that is the best move okay uh, but in the game, uh, Kursit uh, take this and also Hafiz also make a little bit mistake here because when you take with the queen, even though you think that oh this cannot take cannot take uh, what you call black cannot take here of course black cannot take here because open file black will never take the the problem with this is because Kur will play this in the game Kur play this thing d5 protecting this thing remember the the piece now. The, the amount of piece on the board is not many anymore. You only have two minor piece and queen and two rook. It's not like a lot of piece. So when they are little piece, it's very easy to defend only one pound. The point, one point lah, one point there. Because there are no weakness uh, anywhere else. So it's much easier to, to ni lah. So let's see here why this is a uh, mistake is because it just sort of like block his own bishop that's one thing and also uh, that's why this bishop g5 uh, is better not only you improve your bishop you also connect your rock uh, your rook uh, so that's the one of the reason lah so let's see now how white can exploit this what we call this uh, black square black black what we call black dark square this dark square weakness sometimes you have this what we call the the advantage you know you have the advantage but more often than not people don't know how to convert the advantage the the winning advantage to the win one game okay it's very sometimes it's very difficult to win a one game because uh no it's easy to win but there are times that if let's say your opponent make a best move you need to know how to win uh, the winning game okay now you can see that white have uh, some advantage but how to win okay so let's say uh, white play this thing because if uh, white don't play this thing then knight just go inside lah just go inside and do all sort of trick so black need to play d5 and then you can go there you can go here and then uh, white play rook a e1 here you might say that okay there are no attack and so on remember in chess it's not all about attack here the white doesn't really continue his attack but he, he improve his position positionally because here if you can see all root move this move this root doesn't have any use this root also doesn't have any use this bishop also not really useful and this may be useful to protect this and so on so here white play positionally to keep pressuring the 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 the, the, the black king lah because black cannot do anything okay so now let's say now you take this thing because if you don't take then just simply take later on uh what we call for example let's say i give a null move eh? i give null move uh the, the idea for white is just to take and even if queen take with the check now because you see the queen check our king the can just go there and now now black need to deal with this thing also okay so that's why this move sort of this bishop here sort of like 
restrain i mean uh, cram the entire army of black uh, black nilah black uh, black black camp and also this bishop is important this bishop going uh, stay in this what we call this diagonal this bishop doing a good job uh, not protecting i mean it, uh, covering this diagonal because now if the knight go here at least the bishop can take lah if the bishop stay in this what we call as in the game the bishop stay the bishop stay in this diagonal this diagonal is not really useful for the bishop lah because you want to put the bishop here in order to cover this diagonal which is more important diagonal because with uh, by covering that diagonal you prevent this knight going back to the what we call the f6 maybe some uh, defend whatever so that's one thing lah so in the game uh hafiz play queen take the knight uh <coughs> which is uh, not really good because not only he blocked his own bishop but yeah one piece you cannot do anything lah and then could play this good move lah uh d5 preventing this what we call this knight to go here this position is this quite uh equal even though the position and the white is quite threatening this position is equal because why because this uh what we call this queen adequately protect this pawn there when this pawn as i said this pawn is critical when this pawn is adequately uh, protected then it's okay for both sides yes it's much easier to play as white but uh, black position is defendable so in the game we go in the game we just go okay uh, in the presentation uh, <coughs> uh queen uh, kur said that she want to sacrifice this is not sacrifice this is just exchange lah <coughs> this is just a normal exchange so take take and take and then take whatever whatever go here go here and then go here bishop g5 the position now is still equal lah because now without the queen without the queen there are no more attack you see here with the queen with the queen they are quite dangerous right so the core uh, decision to sort of like go exchange the queen is a good decision lah because when you are under pressure you try to remove the major piece major piece is queen and rook this is major piece normally when you attack at least one or two major piece will be there so if you can uh, decrease the amount of major piece on the board then you have more chance to defend your position so in this game kur offer this exchange and then where uh, of which uh, white take and then it make this position is quite equal lah. so this is equal because there are no more attack the the pound let's count the pound so white have one two three four five and black also have five right i think yeah one two three four five and then the piece also the same so this is there are no immediate attack and so on this is what we call equal position but unfortunately could make mistake here and h5 okay the reason for this for the mistake is because you give uh what we call free free pound lah later we see uh the best way uh, as kur said is root a f8 just protect that that what i call that that knight that knight on the f7 and that's it lah the reason why this is the mistake is because uh, black can get a free pound because now white can take okay white can also in the game in the game white take this okay in the game white take this thing but uh, white can also get this is much more convincing uh, because now uh, white want to go to the end game because in the end game if you have extra pawn it's much easier to conduct lah to, to conduct the game take take because of this tempo to check here white need to careful lah uh, so allows white get a piece up not a pawn up ah because if you take then check check here yeah okay you can take this lah but at least if you go here you can take that and then you have that all the pawn you can get uh you can get free pawn and then this route is also not really cannot move because that pawn and so on so it easier lah it easier for white to win this lah but in the game <coughs> uh white take the pawn on d5 also okay take take and then bishop s3 is what we call <coughs> could play bishop <coughs> could play bishop take uh, uh h3 it's better for cool to play king g7 to prevent this rook pre from penetrate the what I call the 
the F7 and also by moving the king to the G7, uh, Kur can also play uh, what we call rook to F8 later on to exchange the rook. Uh, okay, so it's much more manageable lah. Uh, for defense, it's much more manageable lah. But in the game, Kur take and then causing that uh, white to check and then King G8 and take just free pawn now. Rook F8 and then N E7, King F7, blah 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 blah. And then here, okay, here, uh, Hafiz play Bishop. This thing, this is not really a fork yet, eh? because uh, Black have this thing. Okay, so it's not. I mean, if you take then uh, in the game you take take lah, take take lah. But here, it's much easier for White to just take this pound. You just free pound. Just take that. Okay, just take that, and then you have this. Pass pound, eh? you just pass pound is much easier to play lah, and the rest uh, until here after take 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 bishop take c five. This is what happened in the game. So with the one two three one two pass pound, you have this two pass pound. Then the rest is a matter of technique lah, just easy for white to ni. So I think that's it uh, for Hafiz Jamil and Kuratul Ain uh, feedback from me. So let's now uh, continue with the Hafiz. Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today I would like to present about my game. Uh, this game is I play with uh, Ottoman. So Ottoman playing white and I play black in this game. Okay. Uh, so in here, the Ottoman decide to play uh, knight f3. Okay. Usually uh, when white do this move, it can cause a uh, a lot of things to happen lah, uh, for white. And then for me, when, uh, I have learned something based on my previous experience during play. They are called some technique in the opening, it's called a uh, mirror, mirroring uh, technique. So whatever, this is a choice for, usually choice for black lah. If white do something like very strange for you, you can try this by simply follow whatever white is doing, just duplicate the move. So this is the move that I have done uh, during I play against Khalid also when Khalid is playing white and I play black I also do the same thing but uh, at one moment even though you are trying to copy back whatever white is doing uh, if white know how to break the mirroring effect he will cause some uh, effect like taking something so I cannot move when uh, white do the d4, I cannot push, simply push d5 because that will cost me uh, some as giving up one pawn for white. So I decided to take first because I saw the opportunity when uh, white is taking using the queen, I can simply develop my, my knight here. Or even though if white... Uh, Things want to take using the knight here, it doesn't matter because I still can push the pawn here. Or I can simply just, my idea is uh, when I taking this pawn, it's basically to move my knight to the uh, knight c6. So the queen is suddenly go to the queen h4. It's okay for black because the idea is the black can simply thread off with this uh, bishop. This is a normal thing to do when you're playing white against black, this kind of setup. So I kind of already prepared for this. So now I'm launching the same idea. See, this is the, the good thing when you're mirroring somebody. You can know what you should do. But at some point, you need to be careful. Lah. Okay, this is the difference here because Safidin already moved the queen to the h4. And then the rook can simply come here to the rook e1 but this is uh, the computer set is in accuracy because in this uh, position i have kind got the advantage to create a pass pawn okay but i didn't choose it that so i simply move my queen here so uh here's the thing uh when i move here and then why also do this move uh knight c3 even though not, uh, white guys just simply take the pawn on the d5 but i simply choose to take first okay 
because uh, if I don't take, there's actually three people that attacking this pawn. I only have two pieces defending the pawn, so I just uh, resolve the pressure. This is one more thing during my experience fighting against uh, FM during the Medeka team. Even though the pawn is can be captured, uh, you can just simply leave it there to create a pressure because whoever feel the pressure first, they will kind uh, like sort of making a mistake during the calculation. This is one thing, uh, the beauty of chess is that, uh, exactly because actually we are playing against human. We're not playing against a robot or AI. So that's the thing that you need to take count of uh, uh, psychology effects on uh, playing chess. So I simply resolve the tension there because I don't want to put some pressure on that thing. And then uh, the black, uh, the white also have want to still keep the idea of making this uh, bishop here. So I just simply let him be. So I grab this uh, open file because I don't want to give uh, the control only for white. So I fight for the open file. And then, yes, the white uh, simply do the idea of trying to exchange my strong bishop, the black color bishop, the black color square bishop. And then I put my queen here. It's actually the computer says it's inaccuracy because I can move bishop uh, g4, but the, actually I cannot get the idea of bishop g4 here, even though it's docking the white. Uh, queen, so somehow uh, giving me some advantage of space because my queen is much active than the white queen, but I didn't uh, choose to do that because the thing is, uh, my game style, I usually like to play a simple game. Lah. So it's okay for me to get a draw than uh, losing the game. So that's why. So And then this also uh, quite surprising is that uh, Eventually, White also uh, joining with me. He decided to play a drawish game. So he simply trade off the major piece. Now he's starting to... He got like a simple position uh, because the only thing that we can contest is the open file here. So whoever control the these two files, the D file and the C file is going to be winning the game or getting an advantage. Uh. So, so here I simply blocking the movement of the knight from jumping here. So we can, I don't want that to do. So I just simply block the knight movement. Uh, during a uh, white move here, the A3 is something give me some a good position for the bishop. Okay, because the bishop... Uh, when the bishop is here, it's actually quite bad because it's blocking my pawn. Uh, so the pawn it should not be here. Lah. So I plan to move my bishop, but uh, then white give me the opportunity to simply develop the bishop and can push the pawn. So in the meantime, also controlling this uh, the file D already. So white simply doesn't want to contest for the file, so he give it to me. So I think, okay, it's good. And then uh, white also choose to choose uh, the file for the C. And now I simply doubling the rooks to strengthen my control on the D file, even though I know the white eventually going to control this open uh, C file. So pretty much the game is a drawish, also a simple game. It just... Uh, need to be careful of the simple tactics and you need to have a strong uh, idea what you should do when there's no major piece in the game. Lah. So actually, i wandering around my rooks in the night here to develop into a much better square because uh, you can see the D5 is actually the one of the critical square that need me to control and I regain control of the d4 because I got three pieces is attacking the d4 I got the rooks sorry I got the rooks here the knight and another rook and only have one knight there so uh, that's okay good 
So eventually, I can make simply push uh, push my knight there. But the problem is here the d5. I don't want that to happen. Even though uh, because the knight can simply move here, I take and take uh, because I got two, he got one. Uh, it's okay, but the thing is, uh, I don't want the create some allow the knight to simply move uh, anywhere lah because uh, this knight is having a good position here. So it's very good position. So he, this is the best place for knight, but I don't want it to go here. And then I uh, actually I also plan to push this pawn to here or here to allow my king to join the game. So that what uh, I reroute my knight first, and then that's the idea lah. I push the pawn. The idea to push the pawn is actually to support this pawn. Okay, that's one one of the things why I reroute my knight to give a support to this pawn because this pawn only got one support from the knight. And then I want to strengthen the pawn support so that I can move my knight to this square. Because right now I cannot move my knight to this square because there's nobody guarding this pawn. Okay. So I reroute the, the knight. So this move is actually bad according to the computer because uh, I can simply move here knight a5 that I can see I I want to gain control or I, I want to keep occupying this uh, b3. So I plan to do that by making move uh, bishop e6. So bishop e6 is also preventing this uh, white bishop to attacking these rooks and try to gain control of this square. So I simply block the move. So by moving this bishop back, so we need to remember that when you move something, you gain something. So that's the thing. Lah. So in order for me to prevent the bishop from uh, uh, occupying this diagonal, so i leaving this important diagonal. So I simply choose to trade off. So eventually the game will become rubbish. Lah. So we keep continue playing. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, I like to play this kind of position because it's much easy to play and nothing much can do. But you need to know uh, the concept of in the end game. Right? So basically the king uh, position and the about the which position is good for like we got here, we got a bishop and knight. So bishop and knight, you can see the bishop is a white color. I still got the white color bishop. So the theory is should be uh it's not drawish game. Lah. It should be someone should win the game. And then I I also keep uh, my pawn on the white square. This is for to preventing the white bishop to come to my territory. Okay. So here I offer uh white to take my knight because. In here, my knight cannot do much thing. Okay, he trapped here, so I keep wasting the tempo to develop the knight. So I offer to white to take the knight, and he also decided to take this because for white, uh, the knight is much stronger. Okay, the white uh, knight is much stronger, and the bishop is a very bad bishop. So it's okay to trade a uh, bad pieces with a bad pieces uh, position. So. We play with our strength. So I got a good bishop here and she also got a good knight. So the rest is just simply the technique of handling the end game. Lah. Okay. So sort of like tricks of the pushing pawn also you need to know. So this is like I want white to take the pawn but eventually he doesn't want to do that. Uh, the idea is uh, I will sacrifice this side of the pawn. Eventually, I will uh, settle this part and push the pawn. So uh, because uh, the king can occupy this square first, okay, and then he will get the opposition first. So if I even I go here to the d6, he can simply move uh, the knight there, try to create some sort of uh, tempo movement. Okay. 
then eventually the rest is just like a drawish game lah. So this is like uh, showing that white uh, doesn't want to do pretty much thing. Uh, he can just simply move here to the B3, but he decided to push straight forward. Uh, I don't think that is a very uh, good idea if you want to win the game, but it's okay because by allowing you to push straight forward to the B4, is making the base pawn here. If even though if I don't take, I push to the a4. The base pawn is still on the white square, and my bishop in the light square, so it still can be protected, lah. So I decided to simply simplify the position. So I don't have to think a lot about this side. So white is trying to do something, and then we. A draw based on the mutual agreement. So that's all from me. Okay, so this is my feedback on Safidin and Hafiz Jamil games. Uh, so the game ended with draw. <coughs> in the op in the presentation, Hafiz talked about the mirroring of this uh, opponent. What you call opponent move? Uh, if you don't know what to do, uh, one of the strategy. That's one of the strategy. Uh, for example, in the game, uh, Hafiz mirror what you call whatever Safidin did like this and also she, he said that at one point there will some time that you cannot mirror anymore okay for example like this uh, uh what we call white uh, pro, pro, provoke the not provoke i mean that put a question to the black whether you want to mirror or you want to take uh, so at one point then you cannot mirror you can mirror at certain point but not uh forever lah uh in talking about the mirroring the opening one of the most famous opening that uh having this mirroring effect is that four knight defense lah so you have this you have this you have this you have this it's not yet mirror but here you mirror lah you mirror okay so this mirror and then for example white play like this and then black mirror like this and then what we call casting uh not casting not casting first this first and then mirror first over uh, override and you, you mirror like this and then you castling and then you castling and then you go to this bishop g5 okay in this case there are one point when you mirror your opponent uh, move there are one point that always white have the upper upper ni lah, upper hand because white is the one who move first so for example here if let's say black mirror like this black mirror like this white have this option of starting the break of the mirror uh, like this taking on the what we call uh, on the knight on the f6 if let's say here black follows like this then white can take with the b with the what we call with the queen and now if let's say black take at least black position black pawn structure will be compromised lah if you take and then i can take take at least now white black pawn structure is compromised so if let's say so that's one thing white have always sort of like upper hand a little bit a slightly a upper hand in terms of mirroring because he is the one who move first okay so uh that's one thing uh let's say now if okay if let's say you you take uh, what you call <coughs> Take this thing and then let's say let's say uh black instead of taking that no instead of that he take what move ah yeah if you do like this then of course you have this you you have this and you can take this and you take, take the bishop and so on so that's the thing lah that that's the thing about the mirroring uh always white always have some slight advantage because he is the one who move first lah okay uh, but uh, mirroring is uh, one of the valid strategy lah because there are a lot of uh, opening that mirror each other. For example, this type of opening, this this also the opening. Uh, that yeah, that that's okay. If you don't know what to do, you can just mirror. And that's why uh, some of the opening they try not to allow mirror lah. For example, Sicilian. Huh? You do like this, you do like this. Huh? How to mirror? Okay, there are some opening you can mirror, but your opponent. Uh, maybe try to create the imbalance huh? so that's why uh, any opening that is like this or playing like this 
So you cannot mirror so much lah. It's sort of like interesting because you create this imbalance. Okay. Okay, in the game. Okay. Hafiz play like this. Okay. So now Safidian play D4. Okay, D4 and then Haf, uh, Hafiz take with the uh, C pawn to the D4. So now uh, Safidian play Queen take D4. This allow easy equalizer lah. Easy equalizer. Because first, it's allow black take, uh, black move his knight uh, with the tempo, which what happened in the game. Uh, uh, and secondly, by playing this thing, uh, black can sort of like easily, uh, when you do like this, and then the, the queen goes somewhere, black have this what we call very powerful, not powerful lah, very standard equalizing move, d5. Okay. So this is quite a move because it equalizes black position easily okay if if you take the best not the best lah i mean that another option we don't call it best because queen take this also okay it's not bad this, but another option which which create more problem to black is to take with this knight because when you take with this knight if you take if, if uh, what we call if knight goes to c6 uh, you can sort of like uh, this pawn here, uh, not not this pawn. Meaning that you can continue the uh, what we call the development and c3 and so on. So you don't need to worry about the moving the queen here and there. So that's one of the advantage if you take with the, the knight and also by taking with the knight you also open this bishop path and so on. Okay, um, and take d4 and c6 and c3. And here, if the knight take, queen take d4, here the difference now, the difference between this and the game, compare with the game, eh? this is what uh, the variation, the game is like this. In the game, uh, instead of taking with the knight, what take with the queen? What take with the queen? <coughs> and then the knight there, and then the queen go away. And then this queen, uh, this pound, this equalizing pound, can be can be made by black because they are like one and two what we call two piece protecting that pawn this bishop is not is still what we call still blocked by this knight so that's why it's allow black create this uh, equalizing move but if you see if you take with the knight if you take with the knight uh, and take uh, d4 and then you move the knight on c6 and then you move this thing and then if the knight take the queen take now the d4 square here is firmly sort of like firmly uh, what we call firmly protected so it's not easy for black to make this push anymore this equalizing move anymore because remember if you look here this bishop here is quite uh, not yet developed lah compared with this bishop this bishop is already developed because even though it's at c1 and it it's its original uh, square this there are no like uh, block uh, along the path but this bishop is really still need to be developed <coughs> and when this bishop is not developed this rook also not developed so that's what the difference between taking with the knight or with the queen <coughs> <coughs> but of course uh, saying that even i say that black is not obliged to play nc6 okay black does does not oblige to play nc6 black just can straight away equalize by move straight away d5 <coughs> and <coughs> can get sort of like equal position lah because you take and then you take with the knight and then nc3 nc3 uh <coughs> you can take like that and then you can take like this and then you can take like that and you can take like this Take like that and you can see the position in on in front of you is almost identical it's exactly identical a symmetrical position is rich okay <coughs> in the game uh white instead of taking that uh if let's say white want to play doesn't want this drawish position because when the position is symmetrical like this if you take you see the position is exactly the same for both side if the position like this it's very difficult to create a count chance or counter chance for each of the uh, players. So the game is, will be normally ended with the draw. Imagine you are a strong player. 
you play against a lower rated player in the tournament of course you want to win because even if you draw with the lower rated player then your rating will be going down so there are time that you don't want draw at all sometimes when you play very strong player you might want draw from your side because yes that player is very strong player and maybe you don't have like uh, what it takes to win so draw is sufficient for you but there are time most of the time many time that you will face very like kids or yeah very like uh, five years old kid of course you don't want to what we call to draw just draw you want to win so this is where you need to break down break the symmetry okay because yeah that's the this, this is how the top player the, the top professional they they, they they are so good in middle game in end game so the only place they can sort of like play a little bit uh be a little bit creative in the is in the opening because remember opening is not about <coughs> making this one move is the best or not it's about the style in middle game when you are uh, assaulted by a tactic then you need to respond concretely meaning that you need to find a best defense in order to not lose in end game also you will make one mistake then gone but in opening if you make this move it's not like move a is bad is better than move b maybe move a is suit your personality maybe move b <coughs> doesn't suit your personality even though that move b is better is <coughs> Is subjectively better or maybe some other people say this move B is better maybe you don't like this move B because it lead to this open position you like this close position this like a uh, calm position and so on it depends on the personality that's why in the opening for example in this case <coughs> white can play white can play root B1 white can play root B1 to break the symmetry okay so if let's say uh, this happens so be it I mean <coughs> you can break <coughs> sorry you can break the symmetry uh, whenever you want lah. Uh, <coughs> okay so that's uh, basically the idea behind taking with the queen or taking with the knight so even if you look something that is so small like this just take either knight or queen can make a huge not huge difference meaning that this is the way how top player try to find a tiny advantage against the opponent they want to think what if if i take with it does it lead to the equal position or not if it's equal should i draw should i win or so on okay so uh, when you play uh, against strong player they don't really care about blunder because blunder is they will make a very less blunder so yeah the only way they can win against the equal strength player is by finding the small small tiny tiny improvement in the opening or positionally uh, outplay his opponent in the middle game so queen take d4 what happened in the game and then nc6 you get this tempo and queen h4 this even though this tempo if you get even now black a uh, white doesn't really have a problem much because even though this is a tempo white develop a uh, black develop with tempo but the white position is pretty much developed like pretty much okay so having this tempo is not really much a problem for white also so uh, white go to h4 when you go to h4 mean that you cannot prevent you you sort of like don't don't <coughs> don't what we call don't give more not not looking at the square anymore lah but even if you go queen d1 still d5 still can be played it doesn't really matter because you have this one and two uh, uh, uh what call uh, piece okay still equalizing but queen h4 is okay and then d5 okay this as i said <coughs> is a equalizing move lah. <coughs> uh, normally uh, people can play this also eh? To, to sort of like if let's say black doesn't want to exchange a lot to pres to don't want this symmetry position then he can play this and now you get this dragon setup right dragon setup more or less dragon setup but the white have this catalan setup here so if let's say black want to preserve something i mean doesn't want to go this equal position then 
he always can play this so playing d6 or playing d5 is all style nothing wrong with d6 nothing wrong with the d5 so it's all about style okay in the game uh hafiz play d5 and then rook d1 okay rook d1 okay here um if uh if let's say you take uh <coughs> <coughs> let, let's let's see the uh, the the more forcing move eh? if let's say you take with this thing uh and you take with the knight okay uh, actually queen d5 also possible but if let's say you take with the knight this thing is not really a pin eh? it's not really a pin because you can just go to queen a4 you can sort of like what we call protect from the side so it's not really a pin lah. it's not really a pin even though you uh white can do that like this you just go queen b6 and then you just yeah you just so this is uh, not attack anymore and now you can see that this is what we call uh, eyeing at the b2 and so on so knight can go c3 and then you can just save the knight again here lah okay so so that's uh, one thing uh, let's see first okay again this thing uh, half is move uh, d5 take if let's say uh, in the game in the game uh Safidin doesn't take but move the rook to the d1 but again let's see first what happened when uh, what take 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 and let's say now rook d1 okay let's say rook d1 as I said this is one thing to what we call to protect the 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 the, the knight another another way to protect the knight is queen b6 lah queen b6 because <coughs> here even though this you seems like giving the free but you have this lah you have this thing you have this uh, taking on the b2 so either this thing and uh, let's say uh, now white <coughs> attack the queen just go to queen c7 and then attack again queen b6 and then you can just draw lah like this because the queen cannot go some somewhere else lah. Uh, let's say you go here and then queen a6 let's say now uh, black go to queen a6 uh, so knight can go to g5 and then here even though it's quite threatening like what we see in the uh, Kur game with Hafiz knight g5 is quite threatening but you have this h5 lah, h5 and even you have this bishop f3 uh, bishop f3 in order to sacrifice this thing and mate you can have this uh, typical way okay here typical how to defense this sort of like intimidating uh, attack okay so the defense here, the uh, one of the defense, there are many ways to defend, but the easy defense is to go to g7 because now you need to sort of like anticipate when white play bishop f3, uh, this bishop want to be sacrificed here. So this is what we call uh, the way how, what we call uh, the defense. So to allow this rook to sort of go here. If let's say now, if let's say uh, white, take on the a1 then you have this checkmate in three yeah checkmate in three because you just uh, black just threaten to check and checkmate on the f7 on this f7 here so the threat the threat is that if you take then you can just checkmate ah, here if for example if let's say black doesn't take then what what just <coughs> take lah sacrifice here and then checkmate also here so that's why this move when you have this uh, sort of scary looking uh, position where the knight on the g5 the the queen on the h4, h4 uh, and then also this bishop ready to sacrifice on the f the one of the ways to sort of like to defense this is to move the king somewhere something else because remember this the, you have still have bishop here so there are no check along this diagonal okay there are no check along this diagonal so if let's say now you take here you take on this uh, h5 in fact this become a blunder now because uh black can play rook h8 and then you get the free piece lah there are no checkmate and even now black uh, white will lose uh, a piece okay so this is a defense and you need to know also defense sometimes you like to attack but sometimes when you play you are in this position you are in this black position in front of you you are in black shoes how do you do how do you defend this position so you need to know also how to defend one of the ways how to defend this is to move the queen the king up and bring the rook here 
Okay, here this is where the computer is beneficial lah. For example, when you analyze your game, this is where the computer is really useful. Uh, because computer excel in complex and tactical position like this. Uh, where human have some difficulties because human cannot see uh, quite far in terms of concrete variation. Uh, human may have this like positional understanding better than computer. But in terms of tactical, it's about concrete line. It's about calculation. So we, when we calculate long variation, we are tired. But computer done, doesn't. So that is where the, you need you use computer for to your advantage lah during the analysis you need to also uh, pre, uh, take, uh, always keep training your calculation ah <coughs> because people said chess is 99 <coughs> chess is 99% tactic most of the game that you lost normally uh, some uh, yeah they are like positional <coughs> loss but uh, many blunders happen because of tactics Okay, because of the miscalculation and so on. So we can see here. <coughs> so we can see here when uh, what happened when uh, when what we call when uh, this uh, uh, white take on the d5, knight take d5, and this you you can always uh, protect this with this from the side or from here, making this counter chance on the b2. But in the game, in the game, uh, white doesn't take on d5, but rather go to root d1 to sort of like uh, to pin the the the, the queen there. Uh, here uh, in the game, uh, black play queen a5. Eh? Black play queen e5, basically protecting the pawn from the side. Uh, but one of the interesting try here is to play instead of doing that is to play this. Uh, <coughs> To play this d4. This is one of interesting way to proceed lah for black. Maybe you might say, oh, this. Can I just do this e3, getting this free pawn? Okay. Uh, and that, that's why when you are here from the black perspective, you have two choice. Either you move the queen or you move this thing forward. As I said, this is interesting. But you might think that uh, this is dangerous because uh, white have this e3, <coughs> e3 pound. So, um, and giving this what we call the pin. For example, now you have this one, two, three piece. While you have only one, two, what we call? Only two, two defender for the pound. So, it seems like white will get this e pound for free. He found uh, the the D found for free, but here black have this very sort of like uh, very nice resource lah. When you play this thing, when you play this thing, you somehow not you somehow you already block this bishop path, bishop path right. You you somehow uh, sort of like, ay kenapa banyak sangat ni? Oi, let me remove all the color. Delete, delete all color commentary okay so so you sort of like block this bishop so black have this sort of like very interesting move h6 uh, you might say eh, giving this for free and what is the purpose of h6 i mean as if there are no purpose this h6 but this is one of the ways how to trap the what I call how to trap the queen in this position okay because the the, the idea is that uh, if let's say what take on the d4 okay what take on the d4 with the pound uh, thinking that he got this pound for free black have this thing and g4 when you put the knight here this pawn is protected and now black is threatened to trap the queen there to trap the what we call the queen on the by putting the bishop on the f7 okay so for example, let's say NC3 and then you get, because now you cannot do anything. The queen cannot go anywhere. It's like totally trapped. Now, if let's say this uh, white try to do S3, then bishop F6 lah. You, you get this tempo you, by taking and also this queen cannot take here because of this knight. So this is the configuration, the pattern that you need to remember. If let's say you want to trap the queen on the, when the queen, I mean, this is quite, if you have this Faketo and the queen here, 
this one of the configuration to trap the queen the the ni lah the, the the queen you go to ng4 and even if you do like this and you have this bishop f6 and then in order to avoid uh, the queen loss then you go to bishop g5 and you take you take and then whatever lah but at least you you get something lah uh, black have some sort of like some advantage so remember this eh remember this whenever this bishop is blocked then you can play as sick and then somehow you can trap the queen okay this not happen many time lah because you need this uh, almost similar configuration lah for this to happen but at least good to know uh, that's why when you study chess maybe this maybe this position will never occur in your game but at least you have some idea oh i know that when the queen goes here goes on the side and this queen sort of like have this cannot go back somewhere the queen seems like what we call like cram so you can trap by putting the knight here then the queen cannot sort of like uh, cannot go what we call cannot go to the left to the right or whatever and it's totally trapped lah so you get this and the thing so that's one uh, thing lah what to know so that's one of the interesting uh, try by pushing the d4 uh, because this this pawn also is not really easy to take in to take lah because after this after this uh, black is threatened to do this and so on okay in the game in the game queen a5 huh? queen a5 and then nc3 okay and then just go 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 like that okay here queen h4 again and then root a d8 and then bishop f6 okay here it's not really dangerous huh? because yeah it's not really dangerous even if you no not really nothing happened much lah. okay uh so <coughs> so queen h5 here so this just want to make thing easy lah easy so you just uh, here the game in the game uh, what take 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 <coughs> so the knight is <coughs> currently temporarily offside eh? temporary offside so here uh, white can just gain some a little bit advantage by just a little only lah just by playing this thing by playing this thing of course the bishop will move because if not if the bishop doesn't move also it's still okay because there are no queen here even you have double pawn also i think so still okay lah but here uh yeah you bishop go to d7 in order to protect this because now uh, not because of this double pawn it's because of this thing because of this thing you have this isolated pawn that's why uh you want to protect that thing if let's say the bishop go to bishop f5 okay bishop of to f5 let's say now uh white take take and bishop g4 and f6 whatever it's very sort of like difficult here it's very difficult for even though now uh, white have the bishop white have the b black have the bishop but still it's very difficult to black to dislodge this knight on the c5 it's very strong here it's very pretty strong lah here okay even though black can go here and d5 like this uh white can go here okay just uh threatening to play like this and so on lah so here one of the ways to for white to gain a little bit advantage is to move the knight to g5 so we see what happened if this thing happened so let's say uh, bishop goes to d7 bishop to d7 and you have this nge4 the difference here is that you can use sort of like white sort of like centralize his knight now instead of having the knight here now the knight is here okay and from here it's much easier to go here which is very difficult to uh, at least it's dominating position here if the knight is here it's good for defending but because there are no queen anymore so this knight is better go somewhere else and also in order to sort of give this bishop on the g to some breath breathing time lah so that's why when you move here even though black move somewhere to the back uh white can sort of like reroute his knight to the more central position lah more central position okay but in this game uh white play e3 and then nfc and so on here the position is quite even though here 
uh, in the presentation Hafiz said that he doesn't like this thing because of this thing is strange this is not really cannot go forward but this configuration is quite okay actually it's not really bad because this bishop sort of like preventing any penetrating penetration on the uh, s7 like this just this bishop the, the 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 reason the more important reason why you move this bishop is that you don't want this thing lah okay you don't want this thing you don't want this whatever thing thing and then bishop go to b3 and then here rook e1 uh, although now black have the file but it's pretty difficult for for what we call for 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 black to enter because in order to enter the reason for gaining the open file normally is to get to this what we call to this uh, seventh rank or second rank for the white but here this rank is cannot be taken lah because the knight is here okay <coughs> So e5 and so on. So the position now goes forward and so on. This thing. Blah, 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 blah. So here when you take here, take, take, take. So if you look here, the position is sort of like, uh, what you call? Symmetrical. Uh, the pound configuration is symmetrical. Eh? This two, again this two. And this four, again that four. So when the thing is symmetrical like this, <coughs> and uh, you don't have any sort of clear ways to proceed then the games normally end up in draw lah. but if you are in the game in the tournament just play just play because who knows that your opponent will make a mistake in this position because it's very symmetrical uh, it's very difficult to create chance or counter chance if let's say the king here already on the center then it's a different matter but the boss of the king still far away so both king have time to move uh, forward lah move forward slowly and at last it will be draw and so on so this is about the end game lah so this is all about the positional they are no like very uh, concrete tactic here so it's all about positional here is where most of the strong player excel lah the difference between strong player and weak player is that normally uh, their end game is very good okay their end game is very good even at this equal position even the theory or computer said this is equal remember uh, human as Hafiz said human when you play with human they are this psychological factor uh, so uh, human tired okay human will become tired and also because you see the end game normally reach at the end of the phase of the game so you have spent like more like one hour during the middle game opening middle game and so on so of course you'll be tired during end game so if you don't know how to play the end game then it's very easy for you to make a small mistake here and there and then uh, your opponent can sort of like exploit that so end game theory is very very important for example like this some people can play like this huh? some people can play at this position when you have this queen attacking so on some people like this position but some people when they reach this position they just don't like to play because for them they don't have this clear plan okay this is where uh, as i said a top player excel lah. the strong player excel here lah. Uh, how to create chance uh, uh, in the position that seems nothing lah. this is where uh, world champion uh, excel out Carlson is quite excel in this the position is equal theory is equal but uh, but the you as a player you keep pressuring because now you are playing against human eh? you play against human then they are tired and so on so keep playing keep keep uh, pressuring the thing uh, so there are a lot of things about the end game lah you need to for those <coughs> new player and so on please uh, nila, uh, make a study on the end game and so on because we this uh, during this uh, session uh, this year uh, I'm not touching the end game much lah but end game I can say is very important very very important all is important but the end game is much more important because why because every mistake count every mistake count and also 
most of the game that is lost at high level normally not because of checkmate and so on is because of the this, this accumulation of small small advantage during the end game and so on how they excel in turning this no, uh, normal looking uh, what we call position into what we call very uh, win winnable game lah <coughs> so I think after this nothing lah this because yeah this is just end game because to 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 explain this takes more time uh, it's a lot of nuance here but uh, yeah we can just say that if let's say the position is symmetrical like this then the if the player is equal strength then the normal result is draw okay the normal result is draw so what we can learn from this Safirin and Hafiz Jamil uh, game is that first is that this thing the opening the choice of opening uh, is important uh, depending whether you want to win or draw okay because sometimes you want to draw sometimes you don't want to win because uh, of this I don't know maybe some reason you 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 want draw draw is enough for you so how what is the opening that you play you can just uh, mirror but mirror you need to understand what always have some slight advantage because he is the first mover and also we learn about this what <coughs> we learn about this uh, this position they are like uh, interesting move as sick okay it's quite strange move but uh, this can sort of like trap the queen somehow it's not winning but it just like uh, interesting move lah if let's say white is not careful then he will got trapped lah uh, what else we learn that um, yeah then in the end game if you have this what we call the equal po uh, symmetrical position then normally the end result is quite uh, drawish lah normally when you are you do analysis eh, when you do analysis doing analysis for this type of game is much more difficult than doing analysis that have a lot of tactical uh, inaccuracy for example if let's say i do analysis in some of the Khalid game and so on it's easy for me to do analysis because the game is in balance and so on here this type of game the Hafiz uh, Safidin game the drawish where if you look eh, if you look from start until the end the evaluation is more or less the equal so it's very difficult to analyze this type of game because when you try to analyze something you need to come up with what i can learn from this game okay uh, when you make a tactical mistake blunder it's easy to learn from that okay but from this game what do you learn so that that's that's one one thing about about draw game eh? about draw game eh? some some draw game is very difficult to analyze because you don't know how to improve this position further but if the game like you get make blunder here and there then very easy i mean oh this is i missed i miscalculate this i miscalculate that you know the reason but this this type of game how to analyze that how to come up with some idea some what we call some new idea how to learn from this game uh, that's that that's that's more for me that's far more interesting lah to to find rather than a tactical game uh, you make a blunder here and there that's for me like uh, because you have the stockfish and so on it's easy to use that but here is where computer also uh, when computer said when you do the analysis computer said draw 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 so how you want to improve further how, how you want to put the human element during the explanation during the analysis itself so for me uh, analyzing the draw game is far far difficult eh? analyzing draw game a draw game that is uh, that is truly draw lah not like Mizan and Khalid game yesterday uh, Mizan and Khalid game is draw because of time whatsoever it's not really uh, difficult to analyze this game is difficult to analyze in terms of what to give what to what new thing you can learn from this game uh, so, so that's the thing so try if you have time try to analyze the draw game draw game that is good lah not draw game because make mistake or time trouble or whatever the draw game that is good okay so i think um, 
That's it for my uh, feedback for Safirin and Hafiz Jamil. Let me open this thing first. <coughs> let me open. Let me bring myself. Let me bring myself. Let me open this thing first. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, that's conclude our. Let me see. Let me open this Google sheet and this thing. Okay. So now our we, Alhamdulillah, we already finished this 9 to 11 a.m uh, the last coaching uh, the last coaching session uh, for this year for masum 2021 um, so uh, if there is any question uh, you can ask me related to chess huh? you can ask me uh, to whatsapp or whatever before you only uh, so if there is no question uh, let me let let us end this session first with a recitation of um, uh, tasbih kafara and surah al-as